ready to plant this cover crop field here. We're going into soybeans. This is cereal rye, planted in early October of 2019. We're trying something a little bit different on the farm for us. We're going to try and plant what we call green or live here today. So this rye would have been planted in early October, um, and it's almost, you know, it's getting ready to go to seed right here, you can see. So ideally, we don't want that to happen. We want to terminate this crop before it would drop seed. Um, and the idea here is that we would come in with a planter and we would crimp this plant starting at the bottom all the way to the top. And plants have a circulatory system just like we do. And if you can crimp that circulatory system, you can essentially stop the plant from being able to get water um, throughout itself and transfer the sugars through photosynthesis around in that plant body. So crimping it is a pretty effective way of actually terminating this crop and it doesn't require the use of any herbicides, which is another thing that we're trying to do is cut down on the herbicide usage for something like this. We do use cover crops in other areas of the farm. We've got another field that's going into soybean or has soybeans growing in it already. Um, that cover crop of also cereal rye, just like this, was also planted in October. But we came through early in the spring and we terminated that crop with a herbicide treatment. And you see that that rye only got about 80, 18 inches tall or so. Whereas this rye, you know, in some spots, I'm six foot three and it's every bit as tall as I am. Having a cover crop is always going to help soil erosion, whether that cover crop is just a few inches tall out of the ground or is as tall as this one is here. Um, a lot of different cover crop species will put down a really deep root mass, even if it doesn't look like they're very tall out of the ground. You may have a, um, a, a wheat or rye or a clover or something um, that's only a few inches out of the ground, but it may have a root system that's 18 or 24, or maybe even deeper um, inches in the ground. And that really helps to bind the soil together. A nice thing about rye is that um, it's also doing a good job as its roots are pushing deeper in the soil, it's pulling nutrients up to the surface into this plant. And when we terminate this plant with that, uh, with a planter or the roller crimper going over it, or even in some of the other areas of the farm where we use a herbicide treatment, those nutrients that it's pulled up um, start to break down and those nutrients will stay in that top portion of the soil profile for whatever crop we've planted there. So the rye was planted on 15 inch centers. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna split that. So when we plant soybeans, we're on RTK guidance here, which basically means that our tractor is controlled by a GPS signal and we can control the exact line of that tractor to within a centimeter or, or even closer than that at times. So we'll come in here, we'll split this row. The bean planter will run right down the middle here and we'll have soybeans that will eventually pop up right between these rows of rye here. So the rye will be bent down, it'll be protecting the ground preventing the soil erosion and suppressing any weeds that happen to, to be a weed seed that's in the ground already. And then that rye or that soybeans are gonna pop up through there. And if we do it all right, and if everything works out, it'll look just like a nice, uh, maybe a nice uh, mattress or a nice um, sheet of straw was laid down. And then those green soybeans are gonna pop right up through the middle of that. And uh, that's what we're going for here. So we're gonna give that a try today and see if we can make that happen.
So we're seven days after we planted this rye field last week. As you can see, we're starting to get a couple of soybeans germinating. The guys did a pretty good job of splitting the row uh, of the rye that was planted. You can see there's still some, some moisture underneath this rye. If you were to take a thermometer and measure the surface temperature of this dirt right here, um, where the sun's beating down on it, it's probably, it is significantly warmer than the soil temperature underneath this mat of rye that we've got. That helps retain a little bit of the moisture, doesn't evaporate off so fast, and helps those soybeans germinate a little bit quicker. The other thing we noticed as we were out here walking around is that we had a little bit of dew this morning, and it seems like the rye has kind of captured some of that dew underneath this, um, all this vegetation, and it's kind of holding that there, and, and hopefully that's something that the soybeans can utilize, and so we're excited about that. We got a pretty good crimp on this rye field. You can see it's uh, it's really starting to change colors. There's still a little bit of green in it, but we're pretty confident that that's going to all take care of itself, and and the rye is going to all um, die on its own, and the soybeans will be able to push up through this mat, and we'll have really good weed suppression here. We won't have to use uh, any herbicide to to terminate this rye. Well, we got a good crimp on it. If we pull one of these out, you can see how that circulatory system of the rye uh, was just snapped in a couple of places there. And uh, that roller crimper that we uh, used on it did a really good job. Um, the planter coming through pushed it over and then we rolled it on top of that and just got a good crimp on it. We were able to terminate it. Didn't have to use any herbicide here. Um, so we're excited about that. We're looking forward to see how this field turns out. We'll keep you updated. Hopefully we'll have some pretty cool uh, pictures and videos to share with you in the future on this field. A um, couple of days, we should see the soybeans start to pop up through this mat and we'll check back in with you then. Go ahead, give us a like and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram uh, at Farm Science Review.